In this simple video, I'm going to show you how to update Photoshop, what to do before you update Photoshop, and if you should update Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, and today we're talking about updating Photoshop. So I've got a few simple things I want to show you and probably a couple of things that you might not be aware of. So this week, as you know, a June 2020 update came to Photoshop 2020. So right now we're gonna have a look at updating Photoshop. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to find the update if you don't see it. So what we wanna do is go up to our Creative Cloud. And when we click in our Creative Cloud, this gives us all the updates. Now what you wanna do is click on Updates up here and this will show all the updates that are available. Now I've already updated Photoshop, but it doesn't matter everything I want to show you here, it's still going to work. So the first thing you want to do is restart your computer, just so you clear everything out, and then click on these three ellipses, and then you're going to see an option here that says check for updates. I had a lot of people message me and said that they didn't see the update, so what you want to do is do this and in that way it's going to reach out to the cloud and it's going to check at that exact instance and see what updates. So the updates could have been uploaded before the last time this checked. Now there's a second option here that says enable auto update. Now some people turn that on. If you have that on, essentially what that does is when an update comes, it just automatically updates in the background. Personally, I don't do that because there's too many other applications that I could be running where I could have big jobs going on, like such as Premiere Pro or InDesign, and I don't want to update in the middle of a job. I want to finish that job before I do it. However, if you're not really worried about it, you don't have anything mission critical, just turn that on, and then you don't even have to worry about the updates. They're just going to constantly happen. However, for the rest of us that want to manage them, uh, this is where you would turn off Enable Auto Update. So you can kind of go there and see if that's on or not. All right, so once it's checked for the updates, we can click here and just choose Update All, and it will update everything. Or, of course, we can go in here and we can update by the application. Now, we also have categories. So if we want to click on Photography, I can see there's a Lightroom update that I haven't done yet. Lightroom Classic has been updated, and so has Photoshop. Now, also make sure you update Camera Raw because quite often people will install Photoshop and that Camera Raw plugin sometimes is a separate update. So you want to make sure that you update that. So maybe everything's looking normal and you go into Camera Raw and you're like, where's the new interface? Make sure you update that. Now, I got asked a question today and it's a very good question. The question was, I'm not sure if Photoshop is going to work well on my system. If I update, can I downgrade later on? And that's a very good question. And the good news is absolutely, yes, you can. And I'll show you how to do that. So if you're inside here and you don't like any version of anything, just find the application and see these little ellipses. Click on those and you'll see something that says other versions. So if we click on here, now we can see earlier versions in here. So each update is in there. So if an update doesn't work well, you can just go in there and you can stall a earlier update. Now, and another amazing thing about Photoshop is you can install more than one version at once. So if you don't want to interrupt your work, you can install the new version without uninstalling your old version. Now, there's two types of updates you're going to get. You're going to get your little incremental updates, which are just going to kind of update and not really give you the option. It's going to take the Photoshop you have and move that into a newer version, such as the one that just happened. If you wanted to go back to the previous version, just simply go in here, look under older versions, choose the top one, choose install, and it will install it. Now there's a second type, and that's a full version. So these are what's known as dot releases. A full version or full release usually comes out historically around about the time of Adobe Max, is usually when you see those full version updates. And this is where people get in trouble because their plugins disappear, different things disappear. So what happens with this is it installs a brand new version. And then when you go to do it, you have an option that says remove preferences, remove previous version. Don't remove the previous version. Install the new version. Make sure it's working fine. Get it all set up. Get everything working how you like it. And then 
remove their older version. Don't let their older version just get removed by itself. But once again, we can always go back here and bring it back in. So that's the big difference. So whenever that big version, that main version comes, it's going to it's going to replace that. It's going to completely replace Photoshop. Whereas the dot versions just update the existing version you have on there. Okay, so one of the things to look at here inside of Photoshop is before you run an update, you might want to back up your preferences and settings. So if we go under the edit menu, under the edit menu, you're going to see another menu that says presets. And there's three different options in here. We're going to have a look at these right now. Now migrate presets. If you have an earlier version of Photoshop, and this is what I'm talking about, like maybe when you do an update and you've still got the earlier version on there, and you want to copy all the presets from that older version into the new version, click on Migrate Presets. It'll look at that old version. It'll grab all those presets and install them into the new version. That's something you definitely want to do before removing the old version. Now we have another option here that says Import Export Presets. So if we go in here, and we choose export presets. These are all the settings that I have. So we can see layer styles are affected, custom guides. We've got different workspaces. So a lot of these presets are going to appear in here. If we want to export them all, we're going to choose add all. So they need to go into this column. Once they're in this column, we can do it. Otherwise, you can do them one at a time. If I don't want that, I can just click here and see how we can do those one at a time. I'm just going to add all though because I want them all in there. And we're going to choose export presets and we're going to choose a location. One of the things I like to do is actually go to my creative cloud. I've created a Photoshop folder and this is where I manually do my presets and I'll click on presets here and click open and that will actually create a folder just like we see here exported presets. That's actually them. So these are the kind of things that are all going to be there. Keyboard shortcuts, tone curves, different things like that. You are all going to be saved under there. And I'm not saving that to the machine. I'm saving that off to the cloud. And the reason for that is if my machine uh, breaks for some reason, I lose it. I still have access to all of my presets in the cloud. And that means I can access them from other computers. Now, if you want to get those presets, what you're going to do is choose import preset. Notice this is empty. We're going to select the folder. So I'm going to go to my preset here. There's my presets folder in the creative cloud. See that? Then I'm just going to click open and look at this. This is all the presets that I have in there. And if I want all of those, I can add all and I can import presets and boom, it's done. So all those presets now are active inside my version of Photoshop. Now there's a couple of other things you might want to manage manually. Let's have a quick look. One of them is brushes. So if we go under our brushes, we can see here we've got different brushes. And if we've got a brush set that we want to export, such as this one here, I'm going to choose here and I'm going to choose to export selected brushes. Now I'm also in the creative cloud here and I've created under that Photoshop folder, I created a folder called brushes. And these are my ultimate universe creator. So I'm just going to call it the UUC. And I got those from Design Cuts, by the way. And I'm going to click Save. Now I've saved those brushes. Now to load those brushes in, we just click under this little thing here, under the Brushes panel, of course. Choose the gear. Choose Import Brushes. And there's all the brushes. Now you can do this to Creative Cloud. You could do it to Dropbox. You could save these wherever you want. You could save it onto a thumb drive if you wanted. And the nice thing is just put all your presets in a separate place. Now there's one more category I'm going to show you here. And as if we go up under here, under actions, when we look at our actions here, we also have the ability to save and load these. So we're just simply going to choose there. You have to do it by set and you're going to choose save actions. And then we can save those actions. Once again, I'm going off to that presets in Adobe Creative Cloud and I just hit save. And let's grab my other one. Let's export those. So I'm saving those actions. Okay, so if I ever need these actions or I reset my preferences or anything like that, they're safe there in the cloud. And I can just go under here and I can choose to load actions. I can find those actions and then I just simply click open and they'll load in. 
Now, if you remember when we we're under the edit menu, under presets, there was one more option here is the preset manager. Let me go there again. Edit, presets, preset manager. Now, all the presets used to be here, but most of those now are covered by our import export. So we've got two other options here. We've got our custom contours and we've got our tool presets. And if you wanted to manage those, of course, you could select them and you could save the set. Let me just control A, select them all, save the set. And we would save those and we would load those just like we did the rest of the presets. So that's how we can control all these presets. OK, so now you know how to safely back up all those presets. So there's one other thing I want to talk about, and that's preferences. When you update Photoshop, sometimes you have the option to replace that preference file. If you're doing the full version, you want to do that. But you don't necessarily want to do that until you've backed everything up, you've saved everything up. And there's another trick about this. So if you have problems inside of Photoshop, go to Launch Photoshop. If you hold down Shift, Option, Command on the Mac, Shift, Alt, Control on Windows and click, you're going to get this option to delete the settings file. This is called resetting the preferences. And when you have major problems with Photoshop, it's freezing, it's crashing, things aren't working right. If you do this, it will reset all those preferences and fix 90% of the problems you're going to have in Photoshop. But just remember, when you reset those preferences file, some of those tool preferences and some of those things could be lost. And that's why you want to back them up first before you do this. And also, when you install a fresh version of Photoshop, you have that option to delete that preferences file. And it just makes it nice and clean and makes it run uh, nice and smoothly. So I'm going to click no in this case. And by the way, if you click yes, it's just going to open up Photoshop like normal and it will rebuild those files right away. Because I have one more thing I want to show you guys. OK, last thing I want to show you, and I've heard this from quite a few people when they update, they've said that their object selection tool is missing. And this is actually really easy. The reason it's missing is because of workspaces. What's happening is when you're using a custom workspace, if this workspace was created before Photoshop 2020, that tool did not exist. There was no object selection tool. And so it's not going to show up in the toolbar because the preference is not going to allow because it, it didn't exist. So I'm going to show you how to fix that right now. So what you want to do is go down here, hit these little three ellipses, hold them down, choose edit toolbar. And we'll see the artboard tool object selection didn't exist when I created this workspace. I've been using it for a while. Choose Restore Defaults, puts everything in here, and click Done. Now the Object Selection tool is in here. But wait, if you don't update your workspace, the next time you update Photoshop, guess what's going to happen? That tool is going to disappear again. And that's what's happened to some people. So what you want to do is, now that we know we've updated that, we want to go down to our workspace here. We know it's called Column Minimum. The check mark tells you which one is selected. So what we want to do now is all we need to do is just choose new workspace and give it exactly the same name. Hit save. It's going to say, do you want to replace it? Yes, I do. And now you've replaced that workspace with the one that has the object selection tool. So you'll never encounter that problem ever again. So anyway, guys, how did you find this tutorial? Hopefully it was useful. Let me know in the comments if you learned anything new or this helped solve some of the problems that you might have had. And by the way, we're doing these beginners tutorials once a week. Let me know what you would like to see for the next beginners tutorial and uh, it will help me plan what I'm going to do. So anyway, guys, if you are new here to Photoshop Cafe, first of all, welcome. Really happy to have you here. And I'd like you to join us for the rest of the tutorials. So the way to do that is hit that subscribe button. You'll find it there on the screen. And then when you do, a notification will pop up saying, do you want to turn on notifications? Turn on all of those. You won't get spammed. But what it does is it'll just send you a notification when I upload a new tutorial. And I'd love to have you join us for those. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Select that like button and smash it into dust. That's the thumbs up, by the way. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.